Hey everybody, welcome to Grim's Forge Gaming. Today I'm going to give you just a little update on what we're doing with our Sword Saint Stamplar build. And uh, I re released some BG footage as I was testing different builds and stuff, and ultimately this is kind of what we rested on. And I will give you some ideas of different um, armor sets that you can run for this. It's pretty flexible right now. Anyways, jumping into the build, uh, very first thing, we are running the Ring of the Wild Hunt. And if you saw that BG footage, um, we have access to a lot of speed on this build with, through the ring here and then we also are using quick cloak and as long as you have high enough stamina recovery you can pretty much have quick cloak on demand giving you major expedition to stack on top of the speed from this ring of the wild hunt. You could also see that I haven't changed the trait on the ring here so I have an extra 7% movement speed so if you read the the one piece bonus that down at the bottom increase your movement speed by 15% while in combat and so the 15% plus the 7% is going to give you a nice 22% additional movement speed while in combat on top of the 30% additional movement speed that you would uh, get from hitting quick cloak and so that's like a 50 plus percent movement speed bonus and so I'm literally running circles around some people granted that uh bg is pretty low mmr but uh speed is king in pvp and you can kind of see it being flexed there and then you can see at the bottom it says increase your movement speed by 45 percent while out of combat so that takes us up to almost 52 percent movement speed out of combat which allows us to get to uh, point a to point b very quickly to find the next target um, pretty simple setup on this. The first set that we are running is going to be more cooldown, and this is more from a thematic st um, standpoint. Uh, we are uh, uh, Red Guard from Akaviri, Akaviri Red Guard. That's uh, Ansi. You know, he summons the mythical or mystic uh, weapon. And but anyways, if you read this uh, more cooldown set. The two piece max stam, three piece stamina recovery, four pieces weapon damage, and then the five piece. When you deal damage with a light or heavy attack, you summon an animated weapon attacking your enemies for 15 seconds. The animated weapon basic attack deals 5600 unbuffed physical damage. This effect can occur every 15 seconds. And since they've changed this, it has 100% uptime. It's going to be up and it's going to be attacking whomever. Um, that's great that it's got the 100% uptime. One thing I noticed is that the sword does have a mind of its own. And I might be bursting down someone and the sword goes off and fights someone else. So that's kind of a thing. Um, also, it used to be that the sword would break Nightblades out of stealth. And this wasn't too long ago. So Nightblades absolutely hated this set because it would just follow them around while they're in stealth attacking them and continually breaking them out. You knew right where they were at. And so there was a lot of value to this set when it was doing that it no longer functions in that capacity but it's interesting this is a two-hander on our main bar and then uh or sorry dual wield on our main bar offensive bar and then our back bar is two-hander and uh, we're running new uh Nern honed on our our two hand on our back bar so that way when we switch to our back bar our heels from vigor rally and everything um have the highest possible healing potential and then you can see that the traits on our dual wield you always if you're playing dual wield and you're going to be doing nern honed you never want to do nern honed on birth both weapons um because if you look at the math of it nern honed on your offhand ends up being uh, less of a impact than sharpened and so anyways, Nern Hone, then Sharpen. And if you look at our, our enchants on this, something I noticed was for dual wield, um, and it, I don't know if it's a glitch or what's going on, but the um, jabs were able to be spammed a lot higher, and I thought that that was interesting, uh, or a lot quicker speed on our jabs. And I don't know if it's the fact that jabs are hitting faster or if it's the fact that... Uh, quick cloaks damage is also going off and maybe that's it but it appeared to me that jabs were going off quicker in dual wield which should not be a thing but it definitely appears that way um, after i play 
this guy because I have two Stamplars. I, I play the dual wield Sword Saint versus the uh, two hander uh, Spartan Unleashed. And it's just this visual obs observation that I've made. Another thing, too, is um, both of these enchants, um, you can actually see right now how much they've expended. On dual wield, I go through enchants. Uh, I have to recharge these a lot, uh, uh, way more than on my two-hander on Spartan Unleashed. And so that was something that I found interesting as well. But I'm running Shock on my main hand. So a lot of people will run Diseased and Poisoned or Double Diseased or they'll run Double Dot Poisons on on it but what I found was so shock has a chance to apply concussed and concussed will apply minor vulnerability so they're taking what is it uh, eight percent additional damage and then frost has a chance to apply minor maim and minor maim means that they're doing less damage and so the combination of them taking more damage and doing less damage uh, was really nice and it, I'm very surprised at how often these glyphs um, these enchants are hitting the targets. Um, I'll run a BG and I'll be at half. Um, they, I'll have to refill them because they're going off so often. Anyways, I'm not sure, but there that is. Mark Colden is the first set to pair with the Wild Hunt. And the next set is pretty simple. It's just Bone Pirate. And uh, it gives you max stam, stamina recovery, max stam. And then while you have a drink buff active, your max stamina is increased by 1953 and your stamina recovery by 163. And Bone Pirate is a medium armor set. And um, so I have that paired with dubious cameron throne which is a drink and so that's going to give you additional stamina recovery uh, max health and uh, max stam so it works out really well i can tell you that we're about 2400 stamina recovery on this build and the 2400 stamina recovery uh, buffed up you can see right here just our base unbuffed is going to be 1655 but we'll show you how we get to the 2400 but um, 2000 to 2400 is needed if you're going to use quick cloak in the fashion that I was in that BG being able to just have it on demand and zip around uh, very quickly so and then whenever you run a mythic item unless you're running a front bar back bar setup which we're not on this build um, you're going to break up your monster set and so all we did was we crafted a heavy um, shoulders for more, more cold in and we're running this Belors with additional um, weapon damage on it. So we've got a hodgepodge of, we're not even completely golded out, but Bone Pirate it was what we were running. And we're, we're not um, full in pen on everything. Looks like three of our items are not in pen right now. If I had my way, these would all be in pen to give us a little bit more crit resistance. And we crafted uh, two purple, a neck and a ring and you can see that they're infused with weapon damage I wouldn't recommend infusing the wild hunt uh, for additional weapon damage you're not hurting that bad to get another hundred weapon damage 150 weapon damage out of it that extra 7% movement speed is extremely valuable so um, so let's look at the build buffed up here And you can see we're at 2,000 here, but when we're standing in our rune, we'll get an extra 480 stamina recovery on top of that. So it takes us almost to 2,500 stamina recovery. Our physical and spell resistance, um, looks like our buffs dropped off. Physical and spell resistance, you can see we're at 28,000 spell resistance, 25,000 on our dual wield bar. And we're not defending on our two hand bar, so it'll be the same on that. 2,700 uh, crit resistance, and our crit resistance will actually get better, um, you know, once we get those three other pieces with M pen on them. And so that will be nice. And then you can see that our weapon damage right now is at um, 4,300, 4,344. We could actually get this higher if we wanted uh, by running a second weapon damage set. And uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. But 30K max stamina is nice. 26K um, max health is nice in PvP. And we're not very magic 
dependent on this build at all so 10k is getting us by just fine as well as the low recoveries on it um, and health recovery hasn't really been noticeable uh, as far as being low but i'll give you another option on that too when we talk about changes that you can make on this So you can see that our physical penetration on our dual wheeled bar is going to be uh, 4,400, almost 4,500. And we are running swords right now. So our weapon damage is going to be a little higher and our penetration is going to be a little lower. And so we would actually gain a 20% uh, additional penetration if we were to switch to dual wheeled uh, maces. And so that might be a, a play for us in the future. But that's one change you can make. Let's talk about the gear here real quick on some other sets that you can run. If you are not sold on more, more cooldown and you would like to run something that's similar to those stats. Because the two piece through five piece is nice on this. Um, the next set that I would recommend to run would be Shield Breaker. And so when I pull up Shield Breaker, here you go, Shield Breaker. You can see the two piece, three piece, and four piece are the exact same as more cooldown. And then the five pieces increase your damage done by 6%. So you get a flat 6% across the board for all damage done. And this effect is doubled when attacking targets with a damage shield active. So sorcerers, uh, DKs that are using shields, anyone that's using shields, you're going to get 12% additional damage to them. And so uh, you could sub out more Colden and put in Shield Breaker, or you could sub out Bone Pirate and put in Shield Breaker if you want to drop even more damage onto this build. And so that would work out really well. Your sustain would go down a little bit, which Honestly, I could afford to go down a little bit in sustain. 2,000 to 2,500 is really nice. Um, it's not like Shield Breaker doesn't have some additional stamina recovery and max stam in there. It would be doable to pair those two sets together. Another setup that you could pair together is Eternal Vigor with more Colden or Eternal Vigor with Shield Breaker. And you can put a combination of those together. Your resist uh, recoveries would go up by a lot and then your survivability would go up by a lot as well with eternal vigor because when you fall under the 50 percent health you'll actually gain almost a thousand health recovery and so that's really nice um so so many different ways that you can play stamplar and the way i was playing this i would say one thing that i wouldn't sacrifice is being dual wield on my attack bar for sword saint and i would not sacrifice the ring of the wild hunt those two things kind of define what i was doing on the build so um anyways let's look at our abilities here See our biting jabs has a 4k tool tip on them and then um, it's going to have a little bit of splash damage. We are running whirling blades as our executes got 8400 um, basic AOE damage around us. We're running power of the light. This is our damage multiplier so if we want to burn someone down and it applies minor fracture and minor breach to the target. I've noticed with dual wield also if I put minor fracture minor breach onto the target I haven't really needed to put major fracture on tar targets to burn them down. Um, this kit this damage just seems really nice. Now once we run into the um, higher MMR tier, you know, we'll reevaluate that. We might have to start bumping up the damage on it. But um, you can see Quick Cloak right now is going to do 1200 uh, um, additional AoE damage around us. And then we're running Javelin as our hard CC, 6500, and then it ignores the enemy's resistances. So you're going to get true damage on this. And I'm running the uh, dual wield ultimate. And I actually really like the dual wield ultimate on this. I noticed for Stamplar, I was having a hard time like with healing. And um, so, anyways, this ultimate provides a lot of pressure 51,000 physical damage over 16 seconds so the dot on it's really high and it's going to heal me for 54 percent of the damage done and so this has helped me uh basically just go offensive um and 132 ultimate cost is fairly low too so i have it available often it's a little wonky with its directional aiming situation so you might miss it from time to time whereas like a dawn breaker 
Um, Dawnbreaker Smiting is a conal attack in front of you that has a higher chance of hitting people. But I can tell you that the pressure that this brings it with that tooltip and the healing it brings when it does land is absolutely noticeable. So let's buff up again. Look at our back bar here. Looking at our back bar here, we're running Extended Ritual. The heal on this is underrated, so this is really nice. And it's going to be our cleanse to get stuff of, off of us like uh, Venomous Arrow, Hunter's Respite or whatever, um, and uh, a Venomous Smite, um, Sheer Venom. This is going to get everything off of us right now. We might have to hit it 50 times because everybody's running with that stuff right now, but... Um, it that ability is saving us we're running restoring focus and you can see that it's going to restore 240 stamina every one second and because recoveries are set up on two second increments this is the equivalent of 480 stamina recovery and this also gives us our major resolve and uh, this is our armor buff we're running Repentance, and with Repentance we're going to get 300 health and 300 stamina for every corpse consumed. And then we also get Minor Endurance, Minor Intellect, and um, um, Minor Fortitude while we have this slotted. So when we go to our back bar, we've got some nice buffs going on. Basically, you kill enemies, kill mobs, uh, consume the corpse, and this helps keep you in the fight. If you're serious about dueling and things like that you won't need repentance at all and so you would want to run a different ability here I have a cricket right outside my window here hopefully you guys can't hear that <laughs> Resolving Vigor is our heal. It's almost an 18k tooltip, so that's not too bad. And then we're running Rally for our burst heal, and it also gives us minor endurance, which uh, you only these do not stack. But uh, the burst heal from Rally seems like it's getting a little bit more consistent. It was terrible for a while. You could wait a full Rally duration, and it only hit for. 2500 something silly like that and then currently on our back bar we're, we are running remembrance which is just our healing ultimate we gain major protection while we're doing this and um, sometimes I'll use this I don't have necessarily a way to save teammates in BGs if they're getting bursted or whatever this is a way for me to do the best I can to try and help them and at 118 ultimate it's available often so what you'd have to do is kind of gauge if it's a 1v1 and your teammates getting killed would it just be better for you to javelin jump in and bur burn them down but if they're being jumped by two or three people and you need that to and they're doing okay against two or three people maybe you want to get them back up to full health and then jump in and help uh, chop some numbers you know get get it to an even fight and so like I said we are a red guard on this build and when we look at the red guard passives Reduce the cost of your weapon abilities by uh, 8%, and we're not using, this is probably the only weapon damage ability and uh, this, so that's that's fine. Our executes getting cut a little bit, this is getting cut a little bit, and um, we're getting an extra 2k max stamina, and then when you deal direct damage, you restore 950 stamina. This effect can occur every 5 seconds, and this right here, the adrenaline rush, is another underrated um, sustained bonus that your red guards have and so uh, biting jabs is actually considered direct damage and every time every five seconds as long as we're in the fight we're getting 950 stamina back and so that's uh, pretty impressive and another change that if you wanted to do on your offensive bar if you wanted to make room like say you're dueling if you're dueling, maybe the play for you is to move Javelin to your back bar and replace it with Repentance. And then on your front bar, you would want to put Camo Hunter, Expert Hunter, morph it to Camo Hunter, and drop Dawnbreaker, and then morph Dawnbreaker to Dawnbreaker Smiting. And just by doing those play, that change, as long as you... Uh, um, have two points into this you're going to get an extra six percent weapon damage by making those changes by dropping dawnbreaker here that's three percent dropping um 
uh, camo hunter there's another three percent so a six percent damage increase uh, weapon damage increase would be nice and so that's a play you can make on this build as well it's very flexible like i'm saying there's a lot of different ways you can go on it so and because we are uh, five medium and two heavy you'll only need the first three of your heavy armor passives get all your class passives get all your weapon damage passives and um as you do dungeons and things like that like i can actually get another two percent right there so we talked about the stats the the gear the food the mundus and we talked about the changes let's jump into cp and uh finish it up all right first thing jumping in the apprentice we have nothing here um, second thing, jumping over to Physical Weapon Expert. We've got 59 points for an extra 29% on our light and heavy attacks. We do um, light attack weave between our jabs. I think it's very important for sustain, and so that's important. And then Mastered Arms, we do an extra 61% to all direct damage, which is everything that we do, so biting jabs and everything. So that's very important. 61 points into precise strikes it's going to increase our critical damage and critical healing by 21 percent and then 32 points into piercing for an extra 2800 physical penetration 57 points in a mighty for our additional physical damage it increases it by 12 percent 61 points into ironclad 60 points into spell shield 60 points into armor focus and this gives us an extra 4400 physical physical and spell resistance and so some people will look at the stats if they haven't hung out this far to see how the cp is they'll leave a message um on, in the build you know they'll leave a message in the comments that say how the heck do you get your resistance is so high on a red guard and it's this right here this is how i get my resistance is so high they didn't hang out long enough to see that and crit resistance we have an extra 1000 crit resistance uh, by putting 39 points and this is actually bridging the gap for the fact that we're missing impen on those three items that we're running and this makes the build bearable you know at uh, 2700 crit resistance nothing in hardy nothing in elemental defender this is where i change i vary from a lot of different people and uh, i explain this in a handful of other videos why i don't do that but uh, anyways, quick recovery. We got 50 points there for an extra 11% healing received. 22 points into Warlord. You are going to be CC'd. You will need to break free. 64 points into Mooncalf. And that gives us an extra 13% stamina recovery. I have 64 points in Arcanus. Like I said, we're not very Magicka dependent on this build. I might be able to take that off and put it into Healthy to get more health recovery. Or bring it over and put it into Warlord to get our Warlord up a little higher. And then Tenacity, we've got 56 points into that to get stamina back in the tank when we heavy attack. And 19 points into Befal um, to affect our healing reduction and i might be able to take that out as well because i don't think that i'm running anything that is applying major or minor defile to target so you can get an extra 19 points there i would just simply move that down to tumbling we are a very tumbling a heavy build that's how we avoid damage we're not going to stand around and and uh, hold block on this build because the end is near if you're doing that so that's the build update i told you all the different changes that you guys could do with this build there are so many different ways you can go and i could say as your mmr starts raising higher and you start running into problem and everybody starts feeling super tanky you'll want to start stacking damage so running shield breaker alongside with uh, mark holden might be a, a nice uh, set up for you or running more cold in uh, new moon or shield breaker new moon there's so many different ways you can go with this so um, it's been a lot of fun though check out that bg it'll be in the descriptions below thanks have a good day